Having gone through the postulates of quantum mechanics, we can now start to see how we can uh, use these in practical situations to solve some real life problems. And uh, the, the step to doing that is uh, to choose a basis to work in. So we saw that the state of a quantum mechanical system is generally expressed as a ket vector, which is this abstract quantity to make that into uh, something relatable to real life, uh, we choose a basis. So the motivation of choosing a basis is uh, in classical mechanics, when you solve a problem, you typically have to choose a coordinate system to work in. Uh, in quantum mechanics, we need to choose a basis in which to work in. And one of the most uh, commonly used basis is the position basis which will denote as uh, cat X. So this is a set of continuous uh, vectors, if you will. So this is a continuous complete and orthonormal basis. Uh, so completeness and orthonormality we've seen before. Continuous is in contrast to the discrete basis that we've been working with up until now. Uh, for the position basis, so this is uh, one for which if you operate on it with the position operator, uh, the position bases serve as the eigenfunctions of the position operator. Okay, and the eigenvalue is uh, the position of your particle. Some general properties of continuous basis that are important for us. Uh, so several properties. The first one is uh, sometimes called Dirac orthonormality. So this says that if you take the inner product of two uh, eigenfunctions of the position basis or two elements in the position basis, this is equal to the Dirac delta function. And this is in contrast to uh, the discrete case where if you take the inner product of two elements of a discrete basis set, you get uh, the Kronk or delta. So you can think of the Dirac delta function as a generalization of the Kronk or delta to uh, a continuous variable. The other property that is important to us is completeness, which we've encountered before for a continuous basis. We need to replace the sum by an integral. Okay, so this is in contrast to the discrete case where we had a sum and this is equal to uh, the unit operator, uh, this integral over here. So these are some properties that will be useful to us. So it's important to remember them whenever you see the inner product of two elements uh, of the position basis that is a stand-in for the direct delta function. And whenever you see an integral like this, this is equivalent to the unit operator. Uh, we can also expand on what we saw for the discrete basis sets. So for an arbitrary state represented by 
cat psi of t. We can exp or express this as an expansion in the position basis. So what that means is we can express the state of a quantum system as a superposition of uh, in, pos in the position basis. Okay, and this is in contrast to the discrete case where we had said that you can express this as a linear superposition of the eigenstates of a certain upper of a yeah the eigenstates of a certain operator. Okay, so here we had said CI was the inner product of QI with psi. So that's now replaced by this quantity where since it's an inner product, it's a complex number. And we're going to associate with this inner product, uh, the definition uh, of the position space wave function. So what you're perhaps more used to dealing with, psi of x and t. Okay, so this is kind of the coefficients of this expansion, just like the CIs are the coefficients of this expansion. Uh, notice that this isn't just a single complex number. This is a function of x. So it can take on several values depending on the value of x. Finally, we can generalize what we saw in postulate four, which said that the probability of finding uh, a system in a particular state qi was equal to the square modulus of the coefficient. So now the equivalent statement is uh, the probability of finding a particle in the interval between x and x plus dx is equal to the square modulus of the coefficients. And by this definition, uh, there should be a dx over here. By this definition, this is equal to the square modulus of the position space wave function. And this is perhaps something you've already come across of. Uh, the probability of finding a particle is uh, the square modulus of the wave function. So this is the uh, the bulk of the probabilistic interpretation of quantum mechanics and of the wave function in particular, that its square modulus gives you probabilities. And uh, you've perhaps seen how to use the position space wave function to solve problems like the infinite square well, uh, or uh, the free particle. Uh, so this is typically how we make the jump between the, disc, the abstract cat vector and something that we can use for problems. Uh, and the next video will also present uh, what's known as the momentum basis, which is another popular uh, basis to choose when solving problems in quantum mechanics.